<laughs> so welcome everybody. Uh, today we have uh, Guido Kosu from uh, the University of Edinburgh that will talk about axial symmetry and Dirac operator eigenmode. Guido was graduated and got his uh, PhD in PISA and then he moved for a long long time to CAC in uh, Japan. Uh, recently he moved back to Europe He's still in Europe for some time, and is now in the uh, University of Edinburgh. Uh, Guido has been uh, already in Flame with us. He was uh, one of our uh, invited speakers, updated. updated invited speaker for uh, the XQCD conference, and today he's going to talk about uh, yet another topic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so most the bulk of this work was, was done when I was at KK because I just moved three months ago to, to the Ed University of Edinburgh. And I'm talking essentially the, the topic is the axial symmetry, and I'm, I'm going to discuss why it's so important, it's so strongly related to, to the, the operator eigenmodes and why we study a lot of those. Okay, there will be quite large introduction on fine temperature and axial symmetry and discussion about the literature and then I will discuss the methods and some some final deductions. So this is the map of my collaborators and many have moved so he left physics actually and he's in China now but this is I was working here. This is also okay so fine temperature so this is the uh, the Phase diagram of, of QCD, as we guess now, actually, most of this is just speculation, actually. We don't know if there's actually a critical point here. We don't know if this supposed, supposedly first order line is, is actually here. This is the only well-known part, actually. And actually, we know it's pretty good that uh, zero density, there is a phase. There is a it's expected in two flavors to be a phase transition, and, and we know that it's just a crossover in two plus one for the first. And but the rest of the talk is with two degenerate flavors of of, um, of, of fermions, and uh, I will tell I will discuss in a minute why we, we are focusing ourselves in this point. In this point, and uh, one is the one theoretical argument is that. The order of the phase transition is, is not known actually yet for, for two flavors. And there are speculations about being first order or second order. And that, that the presence of, of this uh, phase transition point, the, 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 the order of this phase transition point could be important for the physical point too. Because remnants of the of the phase transition, uh, of the order of the phase transition can be affected for the crossover point in, in the physical uh, uh, the two plus one case. And, and actually, in order to decide, not the order, but if it's second order, which is the universality class, the presence of not of the anomaly, of the U1 axial anomaly in, in uh, restoration of the U axial anomaly in your, in your uh, uh, fine temperature uh, um, regime is important. And there are several arguments for this. And uh, this is for the theoretical part. For the experimental part, there uh, has been observed a reduction for the uh, in medium reduction of the eta prime mass was observed at Rick. And there are several papers discussing this. And to about 200 MEP, if I remember correctly, suppression of the in medium mass of the eta prime. Okay, so this is what I'm telling. So uh, the rest of the talk is on this line, actually, around this region, which is the phase transition region for two flavors from now on, which is in this diagram, which is known as uh, Columbia plot. Uh, where I'm plotting here the mass of the generate light of sports here and the mass of the strange here. So the physical plot is, is around, around here. And these are the two scenarios that can happen on depending on which is the order of the phase transition and two flavors. So the two flavors line is here when the mass of, of the strain is, is infinitely heavy. And so we know uh, by theoretical arguments that this should be first order, this is well known to be first order, and we know also that uh, we can pinpoint the line when the first order uh, region becomes uh, just a crossover for the phase transition. So okay, so we are we are concentrating ourselves in this point, the current point of two flavors. 
And uh, so if, if it's just second order, the physical point can be very far and, and, um, from, from this line. And, uh, and uh, so maybe no effect is, is, is possibly seen, but if it's here, this, this line is, is set Z2. Uh, so the, the, if it's first order, the, 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 the first order region should be extended to, uh, at finite, in a finite region, in finite mass region uh, above zero. And this is typical for, for first order free transitions. And, uh, and this is a, a easing uh, uh, line here, Z2. And uh, this could be, uh, uh, that could, could have some effect on this visible material point. It could, in any, in any case, could be, could be important for cosmological reasons when, once you're, you're freezing out from, 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 uh, from the big band. The, 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 the order could be important. In cosmological models. Okay, so and, uh, and uh, sorry, and if it's if it's second order here, there are there are several options that can be decided, and this is what we can we can rule out one of these if, if we if we can uh, say that uh, the axial symmetry is restored or not with phase transition. Okay, so the two main points to take home for the entire talk is um, is our, uh, this is very very delicate measurement in lattice density. And we really need uh, very s strong control on the color symmetry on the lattice. And uh, our result is that your axial symmetry is, looks effectively restored because axial symmetry is a, it's an anomaly. It's broken by an anomaly, so it's never uh, totally restored, but can, can have a strong suppression of the violations. And, uh, and, and, and this is happening really very close to the phase transition. And uh, that's the most we, uh, we can say because we don't have point at the phase transition. This, this, it was too expensive. So we have point just about the phase transition. Okay, so, so uh, let's, let's go on, on the, the basics. So this is, these are the, uh, this is the um, symmetry for the, uh, for the Lagrangian in, uh, at, uh, at, uh, below the phase transition at zero temperature. And uh, so below the phase transition, we know that we have a carrier condensate, and this is, and we have a carrier condensate, and we have also instanton objects. And in the Dirac operator eigenmode uh, view, this translates in, in, in zero uh, mode density, uh, this one, uh, which gives you the carrier condensate, and uh, the presence of zero modes, which gives you the instanton. So all these properties are translated in properties of, the, of your spectrum. At high temperature, uh, this this part is restored because the uh, the condensate is not not there anymore, and uh, this is always there. And this we want to investigate what happens to this to this point. At very very high temperature, it's expected that axial symmetry is completely is, is effectively restored because the uh, the topology is completely suppressed, and we don't have any any uh, more zero mode that, that can give you. Uh, if, um, uh, violation for the axis image. But what we, what we want to understand is what happens at the phase transition. Uh, so since I'm assuming uh, uh, almost zero knowledge for lattice, uh, just uh, one or two slides on, on the lattice formulations. So any, any uh, um, so this is a Monte Carlo approach for the part integral, so once you write uh, in terms of the Feynman of the Feynman uh, part integral, your your uh, vacuum expectation values, you can uh, and, and you rotate to the Euclidean space. Everything can be written in something which is very close to a, 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 a thermal uh, theory, which are, with a Boltzmann uh, weight. So you have a, a, a positive probability here, and you can essentially create a, create some algorithm which thermalizes you. And helps you internalize with this with this weight. You create a configuration which are thermal with this weight, and then you can calculate some, your your um, vacuum expectation of values of observables. Uh, your gauge links are just uh, part of the transport in your lattice, so and, and are just links. So you SU three in, in the case of QCD SU three matrices, which are living on the links. And uh, you're, since you don't know how to deal with the Grassmann variables, you integrate them out, which give you, gives you the determinant, and then you, you exponentiate back again using Poisson 
uh, bosonic fields, and then the, the actual action would be using UCD as a as a inverse of the matrix of the Dirac matrix here, which is the most expensive part when you do the actual calculations. Okay, so this is the very very brief way how to do you, how to do this kind of calculation. You generate some some several configuration with uh, which are common weight, Boltzmann weight. Okay, so this is the quantity I will be talking in the rest of the, of the talk. And this is the difference of the susceptibilities between the pi and, and the delta. So in, SC, in, 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 uh, in QCD with two degenerate flavors, this is the scheme for, uh, for if you consider tau symmetry, the, the sigma and the pi and are, are related, the eta and the delta are related, and axial symmetry is relating these, which are differing by, by the base factor in the in the Dirac. Uh, this is Dirac space, and this is the isosprin space. And so the delta and the pi are related. Thus, if if the axial symmetry is restored, you, you should see the same mass, for example, or the same correlators if you are able to measure directly the correlator. And uh, okay, so this is what we want. And this is easy because these are these have disconnected diagrams and you don't want disconnected diagrams which are very noisy. So, so this is should, yeah. what is what is the delta? Oh so it's a, it's a, just a single scalar triplet. And this is a pseudo scalar triplet in your in your ISO triplet. So this is a fictitious particle. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Uh, part of it is, it is it is quantum expectation. Two flavors. So it's, it's not the A naught, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In three flavors, two plus one should be the A naught. Yes, exactly. And this is eta. Is, should, this is the, the quantum numbers of eta prime. It is not actually eta yeah. prime. Yeah. This is just two flavors. Of course, yeah. You're right. Uh, but yeah, okay. Just to fix the ideas. Anyway, we are talking about these two particles, which are are related by this symmetry, and so. Uh, it's this quantity should be zero if if you have a perfect restoration, which never happens, but should be at least very suppressed. And uh, when the susceptibility is just integrated correlator, okay. And this is also a very nice quantity once because we don't have uh, disconnected diagrams, and the other one because you have a very nice uh, 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 spectral decomposition, which includes just the, the spectral density. So this is spectral density, a specific mass, and uh, and this is the the, the spectral decomposition, which includes only the eigenvalues. No, there is no eigenmodeling there. And notice this this exponent here, which means that the very low region is really enhanced. It's really important with this integral. And actually, it's, you can see also uh, when you do the numerics, you see that very very few eigenvalues are really important for this for these calculations. Okay, so the, 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 this, the message here I wanted to, to send is that the low region of your spectrum is, is the one which is giving you the violation of, of the axis symmetry. Okay, so we did this calculation already with the, with the uh, discretization which is called, uh, for the fermions, which is called overlap, which is the one which, is, uh, which gives you the highest chiral symmetry you can get on the lattice. Uh, but has some uh, drawbacks, which uh, when you do when you want to do dynamical fermions, which means dynamical fermions, uh, the the C, uh, the core groups, you put in all the core groups, and uh, you're forced to fix the topological sector because of the properties of the overlap. And so this simulation was done with a fixed topological sector. We, in our, in this paper, we try to convince everyone that this is not a problem. And uh, because we are able, we were able at least to control in pure gauge, just showing that the results were the same, in even without fixing the topology. And this is this is one of the results just about the phase transition, which is about one hundred eighty, and uh, and the low mass. This is the low mass. I'm sorry for not reporting any here. I don't even remember. These are the four channels. These are four correlators, one double channel, and which is telling you that not only current symmetry is restored because we are just about the phase condition, but also axial symmetry is really suppressed, the violation. And uh, so the, the other drawback here that the lattice size was not too big, so you don't have a, a, 
we, we couldn't extract the actual the actual mass. That the only thing we could show that the qualitative agreement between correlators. And uh, I will skip about this. And it really takes too much time. Okay. The other the other the other way you can see the the, the restoration is looking at direct current type Dirac spectrum. So this below the phase transition there is the the uh, so-called van Schaar relation, which is the relation I have shown you before that. The, the density at zero is, is essentially giving you the, the color condensate. Once you cross the phase transition, this, the, at zero you should get zero, but you can get more than that if the gap opens. And actually, it looks in our simulation with the overlap fermions that the gap is opening once you go to, to lighter mass. The lighter the color, the lighter the mass here. And this is around the phase transition, this is, this is above the phase transition, it's one to ten. And so when you get suppression like this with a gap, this interval here is essentially zero. And so this is the other way of seeing that, that the access symmetry, at least with this simulation, looks, looks restored. What are people doing? Uh, so there are other groups which use domain work, which is on this discretization, which is slightly worse, but quite good pro higher properties. They look at the DIRA spectrum and susceptibilities that they found that they are not restored because, I mean, I'm showing you next slide why, why they conclude this. And uh, uh, most of the people here, the other simulation with the uh, uh, staggered core configuration, uh, but using the, which means, that, which is another discretization, but this is very coarse for the, for the, ax, for the car asymmetry, but they use the overlap to get the DIRA spectrum. So they use this kind of mixed setup and they conclude that it's not restored. And uh, a German group using screening masses, they've seen that very, very strong suppression in the car links. And actually, this I already discussed in the previous slide, and this is what they found. This is the German group. This is the difference with the masses within the, within the pseudo-scalar and scalar. So the delta and the, and the pi. And this is going to zero. This is the, uh, in the car limit. This is below the phase transition. T equals zero at the physical point and the entities in the car limit. And this is compared to what you expect around the phase transition. And this is what they found. So they have a very strong suppression, compatible with zero, but they cannot say which is with how close it is to zero. And this is the other group which were doing this kind of mix setup. And this is the spectrum. And they found that they have a peak here. And they found that when they increase the, 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 the when the lattice spacing gets smaller and smaller, this peak gets closer to a delta, which is what you expect because your, uh, the, the, the density of zero should be zero because of the current condensate, but you can have still deltas, uh, which are uh, predicted from dilute instanton gas models. And so they were concluding that, the, and, and that this delta actually is important in that interval and would give you non-zero value for that interval. So this is important. So th this is why they concluded it is not restored. Okay, so let's let's go to what we did. Uh, so, uh, car symmetry is defined by this equation, but you, you never get on the lattice this equation because there is a theorem that tells you that if you want the exact car symmetry, you will have mm -hmm. the pairs of of, uh, of fermions that you don't want actually. And the best you can get on the lattice is a modification of this, which is uh, uh, a dependent. This is the lattice spacing, so this is, of course will go to zero at the continuum limit, but you have this correction. And, uh, and uh, for years, it was, it was, uh, no one was able to find a solution to this question. And actually, it was found uh, 20 years later, more or less, 15, 20 years later. And this is one of the solutions. Actually, this is the only one we know, but it's, it's, it's one of the solutions. And, and it's include, it involved in a sign function. This is the uh, emission uh, Wilson operator, which is one of the discretization you can get. And uh, so you can see, you, you can have, you can have a lot to play. You can essentially play in your simulation just with the sign function. So you can play in uh, how good is your approximation for your sign function and, uh, and what you put inside here for the candle. And there, and there are, many, many uh, ways, and one of these is the Mobius kernel. This is the Wilson operator. This, this funny combination is, is one of the kernel you can use here, and you can show that this helps in reducing your violation of the color symmetry. Because unless the sign function is perfect, you, you will have violations. 
and uh, and this is what we call generalized domain wall. So and uh, you can play this, and actually we fix this to these values, which are called Schmier kernel, and uh, and the function here is uh, what we are using is uh, the hyperbolic tangent for the sign. And then you get you get you get violation which are ten minus four, which is very good. Uh, but I'm showing you this is not enough. Okay. For these kind of calculations. Uh, it, it's very good for, for many other operators, but this one is so sensible to the violations that it's, it's not good enough. Uh, okay, well, we can skip this. We have, we have several volumes, several masses to check the color limit and, and <laughs> several temperatures. The topology is fluctuating in this case, so we have control on that systematic error and we have also control on the, on the continuum limit to get, uh, to get into a final lattice. So, you said, so this means that the topological charge is not fixed? No, not, not anymore because the sign, actually, the sign function is the responsible of fixing topology because you have this, this barrier. In, uh, if you have an action which is like this, and you have the, you need the derivative in your, in your calculation, you will have delta here, which is very hard for any medical algorithm to find the delta. So, and uh, you, you fix topology. Because when you cross the boundary, you are essentially trying to, to cross this boundary. And uh, so if you relax this, your your uh, force is is nicer to you, and you actually can cross the boundary. But it's it's a balance between the two. Okay, <clears throat> so topology is fluctuating in this case because we relax the constraint. Uh, okay, this is the regional. So this is the region of the phase transition from the polar curve loop, which is one of the quantities which is critical of phase transition. Uh, and uh, the finer lattice is this one, and, and these are our simulation. The simulation I'm, I'm going to talk today so is very close to the simulation. And uh, okay, so it's about this, this temperature, and this is the critical temperature we estimate. So, why is the, uh, the polyacro fluid critical in this case? Sorry? I mean, it's not related to a scene in this case, the polyacro fluid. Yeah, but you still have uh, 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 the peak. But Which it's is not another parameter. No, perfect. It's not another parameter, but the phase transition should be accepted. Since this is the actual phase transition, it's not the crossover, we expect that both phase transition are, are critical at the same point. And, uh, and uh, the, the data for the current condition that we have is, is more noisier, so I'm not sure in here it's showing a uh, suppression at this point, but yeah, this is uh, our estimate. It's, it's never zero. And that you use the estimate is here from, from the king which we get. Uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go to the measurement of this of this quantity. So you can you can try to apply this this quantity directly. So you take your correlators, you integrate them and, and, and get the, the results, but this is really dangerous. So if you because if your your source is sitting on one of the zero mode, you will be overestimating your violations. So you will have to, to average your net all the lattice, and this is very expensive. And this actually was done in one of the previous papers of the other groups, and they actually, they were, they were overestimating their violations because they eat a lot of zero modes. And the other, the other way you can do is estimate this, this, this integral using stochastic uh, uh, measurements, so essentially the trace of, of towers of the inverse of the Dirac operator, uh, or calculate your spectrum and use this equation. And we use both, and these two. And, uh, and uh, okay, another thing is that the, since you're, you're in, in, at, on the lattice, you can rewrite this integral in a discretized way, which with the zero mode separated from the rest. And um, and uh, once you start calculating with a stochastic um, estimator, you see a lot of peaks, and and the rest. These are there is one point for 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 each configuration here, and uh, the difference between these and these are about three orders of magnitude. But but 
on all these configuration, the points that are contributing to the final integral are, I don't know, 20. And uh, so the zero mode are, are dominating the signal. And, uh, and 20 configuration are dominating the high signal, actually. So we wanted to understand what's, what's going on and uh, if, if this is actually important in the, in the terminal ankle limit. So, but the temperature dependence, so, so, so yeah, uh, the, these lines, this is below the presentation, these are above the presentation. These lines are the expectation from one zero mode to three, one, two, one, two, one, two. You see that the, 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 the distribution of the values for these quantities are, are peaked at these, except for the below the presentation, but above the presentation <coughs> are peaked at these, at these point where you expect contribution from the zero mode, this is this quantity. And so it means, this is in log scale, when you integrate this stuff, essentially this region is the one which is counting, this is essentially useless. And which means that your signal is coming from zero modes. And the bulk part is, is strongly suppressed one, once we, we, we increase the temperature. But the zero modes are, are really important. Uh, so that then I'm, I'm, I'm driving you through the investigation we, we had and so you can understand why at, at some point would be important few techniques we used. Okay, here it's just the volume dependence, so low vo uh, small volume and large volume and uh, the contribution as you see here for these, these are these numbers. So this is just a non zero mode counting and this should, should go like one, one over p. And this is what you are, you are seeing here. This is the prediction, the ex expectation for that mass at that point and this is just what you expect from, from the calculation. And this is essentially what you see but, but the bulk part is increasing so you don't know which is, which is the final signal how it is behaving on, 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 the, on, the, on the large volume. So your zero mode contribution is like, like, like one over B, but what's going to the rest? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, get lost. Can you, so I mean, what you are doing is uh, you are looking at your operator and uh, you, you are practically taking trace of the, the inverse mm -hmm. in various powers and you are making spectral analysis of this object. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is just the histogram of that of that operator. I mean, for that moment, this calculation is just doing with the stochastic. So forget about the spectral density. This is what you expect from the spectral decomposition. So you are trying to fit the spectral density. Not, not, not fitting anything. This is what well, you expect. Well, I mean, try okay? to re yeah, yeah, I mean, it. This, is, this is this is just telling me that the, the, my expectation from the zero mode from the spectral that the composition is 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 reflected here. Okay. Because the, the zero mode contributions are are, are located around here, the, the, these peaks are essentially zero modes, and uh, so this was just a, a test for the stochastic calculation. Okay. Um, but I'm moving over on this. What, yeah. what, what are you counting? So what are okay, the, what so, are the, so I the, the I pick I pick this this region and I count how many of of, of, of my configuration have a higher value for delta in this region. And I and I separate between the topological sector, which I calculated in this. And the other thing, actually, oh yeah, that, that's a good point because you see here I'm leaking. These are these are zero topological sectors. That's fine, but these ones are k equal one. They should be all above this because this one is strictly positive. So any contribution from zero mode and the rest of the spectrum, but you have one zero mode should be above that line. And actually, you're you're leaking here, so something is not good. So this is this was one one other thing that was telling us that something was not good in this calculation because this is what you expect for for perfect calcium. Okay. So practically, you're saying that assume that uh, there is no uh, topology fluctuation if uh, you are taking a perfect sign uh, a perfect sign in your data operator. Now, the fact that you're not taking a perfect sign is allowing some leaking. No, but the, this, that is not that leaking. If, you're, if, you're sim, if, if your current symmetry is good enough, yeah. and uh, you shouldn't get this, because these contributions are not, not satisfying this equation at all. 
because you're getting smaller, even even with this contribution, you get a smaller value for the entire thing. I mean, Q, these are Q equal one. They should be all above this line. They cannot leak in here. This is not coming. Oh, at, at the end, it's coming from poor uh, symmetry, but it's not directly related as, as you as you were saying. I mean, this is a, a, um, a plot essentially, which is showing us that this stochastic estimate doing blindly in this way is not giving you good results. Okay, something which is not correct. It's not. It's not in agreement with the current symmetry. Okay, these are these are what the results that you can get from this. I'm, I'm going on, and I, I will wrap up this all these things when you understand what it. Okay, okay. So that so that the zero modes are so important in that's the final signal, and and so. What what do we expect from 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 their dependence on, on the on the on the thermodynamical limit? So from the topological susceptibility, you expect that q square over v, which is essentially m square over v, is constant, and uh, so you expect that this quantity is going to zero. And actually, this is what we were seeing: that the, the zero that the, this contribution is is getting smaller and smaller. So let's. Blindly here, very naively, cut all configuration which have q, q bad, larger than zero. So because we expect that the q, but q different from zero configuration are, are not relevant for, or very, very suppressed in the infinite volume unit. But what you, you, what you get is that these are points with, this, with the different masses and uh, different temperatures and in different, vol different volumes, but different masses here, the point is this. And it looks that it's always all consistent. You know, it's not going to zero, so it's constant with the mass. So it looks that there is no restoration in the current limit. So these results, blindly calculating the, the, the stochastic uh, values for of delta, are in perfect agreement with what other people were doing, and uh, which was exactly stochastic estimate. But we have see, we are seeing that something is not is not okay in this calculation. But should you do the? I mean, the point is that you are allowing your simulation to fluctuate. Okay, in topological factors. Yes, that's fine. Let, let, let's make a, a, a wild guess. While uh, I do the generation of configuration, I check the topological charge and I reject the, the configuration. Yeah, that something that we don't want okay. because we want ergodicity, but we want ergodicity and current Okay, how do we achieve that? That's, that's the final part of the talk. Okay, so the, the, the point here, the conclusion here, so once we do the calculation like, like, like any other people, but even with a higher uh, uh, precision for the higher symmetry, because the other simulation we're done with remain well, with, with, with smaller, with a higher violation. So even if we increase with the domain the, wall, the, the precision with, for, for which we get the symmetry, we are still getting results which are comparable with those. And, and the final uh, message here is that it's because we are not controlling enough the current symmetry. And the rest of the talk is, is showing you that if you really do control enough it, the, the current symmetry, you get restoration. Okay? So uh, until now, I was kind of uh, discussing why all the other groups were were giving non-zero results because they had also this leaking here. Okay, so let's check if everything is really right. Okay, so this is this is a, a re, a re, uh, um, you can rewrite the just per whistle relation in this way. Well, delta v is not is not related to the delta here. It's just that. The, the violation of your sign function. This should be zero if the sign function is perfect. Okay, and uh, so this is your 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 Jinsberg-Witzer relation, and you can calculate uh, several uh, mm, mm, expectation values from this. These are the eigenmodes for this operator, the massive uh, Hermitian operator, which is the one you're using in your calculation, which is violating the current symmetry. Okay, so. And this result, for example, here, is is this one, 
plus some term. This one is the, the one you will get if this term were, were exactly zero. So this term is, is zero with perfect color symmetry. And so this term is one measure for how, how you're violating color symmetry, mode by mode. And actually, that you can represent this is a color concept uh, 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 expansion using this term. So this the color concept will be affected in this way by this term. And you can calculate and you get perfect calculation. If you calculate this stochastically in this using the eigen modes, unless you insert this, you know you don't get agreement between the stochastic and your and your decomposition in eigen modes. Okay, so this is important, and this is part of your result. So part of your of your result of the calculus will be dominated by this. And actually, you can calculate even other one of this violation term, which is independent from this. You can show it's independent. And uh, which is this funny funny sound here. Again, these are eigenmodes for the for the uh, for the massive operator you are using in your calculation. And you can show that your delta, this is now the delta, the, the difference between the susceptibilities, you can be written this way. This is the exact calculation you will get with no, no violation of the color symmetry. And this is the violation term. Okay? So, and, and, and then we are able to calculate this and this explicitly. So I can tell you mode by bond, actually, how much of your signal is coming from violation of color symmetry. Okay? Because this, again, come on. Sorry for repeating, but this should be exactly zero for a, for a perfect uh, color signature. So now I have a powerful tool in order to, to tell you how much you're violating. And this is actually uh, are some of the results. So this is the term. And the, the term in, 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 uh, in uh, orange here is the violation. And this is, is the red one here. And this is in spectrum. So I'm picking this region of the spectrum, calculating this part. And the full one, the full sum is in, 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 in uh, black. And uh, this part is in red. And for this one, this, this lattice, which is coarse and close to, to, to zero, the, the mass is a few MeV, the bare mass is few MeV, your, your, your signal is, is just garbage. This is just garbage. It's all, all violation of policy. And when you go up to, to, to final lattices, I've told you already that this is so big in the, in the, the spectrum that the, the integral is not important anymore. But So let's focus on this part, which is the, the relevant. And I'm getting suppression. And I think if I get, um, and this is below, uh, sorry, this is a small mass. With, with higher mass, have even less suppression. So the message here is that coarse lattice like this, which is the lattice where we, that the PNL group was using is essentially giving you garbage. And I can show you that this number, if I calculate stochastically, if I include both terms, agrees perfectly with the, with the stochastic estimate. So if you simulate stochastic with the stochastic, uh, if you calculate with the stochastic, you get this and you get garbage. And so you, you need finer lattices, which means that you need finer control on your, on your color symmetry. But even that is not enough. It, uh, you still have a huge violation. It's a factor of three here, but it's still large. And you can do the same trick with the residual mass M and show that the residual mass uh, for the low modes. Actually, this is the stochastic estimate for residual mass, but the low modes are violating one order of magnitude bigger, uh, uh, larger than, than the average. And actually, so you're, this is another source. I mean, it's a, these are the terms I'll be showing you. This is another way of seeing that the low modes are violating so much that your quantity delta is, is completely affected by, by the violation of color symmetry. And it's not enough to calculate average on the whole spectrum because the larger modes are really almost do not care about violation of color symmetry. Okay, so then how do you cure our problems? Because domain water is not enough. And let's reweight everything to the overlap. So if we have our integral. Sorry. And so I told you already we have we have our simulation and, and we essentially are, are simulating as G this is the gauge part and 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 the uh, and the data operator. But you can discretize in many ways. And one of the way is is the, using the domain work fermions, which are the one which we're discussing until now. And uh, which are violating currency. 
and the other partition function you can get is the one which has overlap fragments, which we, are not, we know already that it's very hard to, to simulate dynamically. And uh, so once we, I transform this and I integrate out the, the actually here are the difference somewhere here. So once I integrate out the fermions, I get the determinant here for the overlap. I suggest a, a different one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if we uh, that overlap is here, so we can get this overlap is G. So this would be the, the, the partition function. <laughs> it's, it's too light. It's no, 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 it's, it's fine. With the light, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. The, the partition function is, is for the overlap would be this one, and this one would be with, with the determinant of the of the of the of the of the domain of fermions. So what we can do is the weighting procedure. So in order to, I want to get the, this this partition function, and. Uh, and I can rewrite Z in this way. Uh, yes, looks like it is minus G. So I get the determinant of the domain word fermions, but I divide by the determinant of the and the determinant of S O V. Okay? And uh, this part is the Z. I want, and this same operator I can measure. Okay, and this is the reweighting procedure. So you can you can measure this stochastic that this object in order to get this 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 function, and uh, and also you can do that. This is with the with the partition function, and you can do also with all the average uh, of your of your operators. So and you can take your spec your your delta calculation I was showing until now and reweight everything to the object. And uh, and this is what you get. You get what at least what you expect. No leaking because the current symmetry is perfectly is perfectly uh, okay with the overlap. And and you get uh, suppression of this region also. This is uh, about one hundred ninety MeV. So just about the physics and the, the, the and the and the masses is, is very very small. It's uh, two three MeV for the bare quark mass. And the point is, is that we can't just calculate the things using mixed action. So if I calculate the spectrum, or if I calculate the, 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 the stochastic estimate or using the overlap operator on my configuration with the manual fermions, this is what I get. I still get something which is chiral. But I get these these peaks of q equals zero contributions, which once I reweight are garbage. This this the reweighting factor kills these parts, which is coming again. Actually, this is coming from the fact that you're using partial punching, that your operators for the C quarks and your operator for the balance quarks do not match. You are not, you are not, 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 you are not expecting unitarity, and, and, and this is something you, you can see in all the, all the lattice we got. The appearance of fake low modes, or fake contribution for low modes, which are completely suppressed once you reweight. And actually, once you look in this, those configurations, you see that, that they, are, they, are, they are really bad configurations. The modes are not paired, we expect pairing of modes and not very completely, so once you reweight to something which is current, it's, it's suppressed. So partial, partial quenching is bad too, it's not enough. You need to do the full reweighting. And for the bulk volume dependence, uh, uh, this is uh, small volume, large volume. Once we, so we, we already understood that this this part uh, and the, in the infinite volume limit is not important, so we are concentrating ourselves to the clinical zero sector. And these are in agreement. At least these two volumes are, are fine, the average of these two. And, uh, and these are the final result, actually. 
the temperature and mass dependence. So these are two temperatures. And then the mass is decreasing in this way. And you see that the bulk part is, is going down. And uh, you see this is not a leak, actually. This is just a way of our being. This, this is perfectly not here. And the bulk part is actually going down because we have a separation of this, this, this low moment. And once you separate the results between the q equal zero parts and the q equal one, which we know in the infinite polynomial should be important, is what you get. Which extrapolate, these are three points, the extrapolation is with a, is with a, with a x squared, but it's just a, just to guide the eye essentially, but this is it's going to zero. And, uh, and actually this is the, 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 the full, full final result. A few data has to be analyzed yet, but this is the fully weighted final result. And this, you see that once the bare mass is going to zero, all our points, which are about the phase transition, these are the points, are going are compatible with zero. And, and this you only get once you do this procedure. Partial quenches are not good, and, uh, and uh, full domain mode calculation are really, really crappy. And with the spectrum, that's another thing that's interesting. And let, let's say here. So this is the partially quenched overlap spectrum. So uh, very nice balance quarks, but very bad uh, domain world fermions and C quarks. So the, the quark loops are really bad. And you see there are peaks here. So let's concentrate on the red ones. There are peaks here. OK? And once we go to the, to the uh, um, sorry. Uh, Uh, yes, this is the partially quenched. Okay, once we go to the reweighting, these peaks are really suppressed, and, and 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 go to here. This is twenty three. This is twenty four. So again, these peaks, which were uh, responsible, if you if you do the, the decomposition of, of the violation of axial symmetry, are not actually uh, good physics. The, the good physics you get once you reweight everything, and the, you get suppression in the car limits. The, the red points are the lighter ones. So the summary, uh, so the volume and mass dependence suggests that the near zero modes are, are really the source of V1 axial breaking. And the lattice fatty facts, and there are a lot of them, as I, I hopefully have shown to you, uh, really can spot the signal. And this quantity is so sensitive to, to that region where, where, where you're violating axial sim uh, uh, current symmetry so much that you need to take strong control of that. So course results are really bad, and you need reweighting even on the finer lattices we had in order to get to get uh, 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 something which is which is uh, a good color symmetry and, and is in line with your expectation for the for the spectral decomposition, for example. And they differ from from the domain plain domain world fairness results. And so after all this, you can, you can ask, uh, this is the last slide, and uh, after all of this, you can ask yourself, what are these, uh, so these low modes are really so important, and uh, what is the nature of this point, of, this, of these modes, and, uh, and actually we have a follow-up on this, on this, on this, uh, on this calculation, we, we try to analyze what's going on with the zero modes, and actually we found that the, uh, the they are really nicely described by, by gas of instant pairs, which are called ions in the literature, which are uh, fractionally topological charged objects. And they are correlated with, strongly with the polar group too, and they are, they are localized objects. They have very nice properties, and, and uh, you can ask me later, but this is a really, really two hours talk for after that. So that's, that's, that's over. Thank you very much. Question. I may start with the question if no one has one. No one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you, you rightly said that you want to keep the ergodicity of the system by not cutting the in the evolution the topological charge, but you can measure only at zero topological charge, and you've shown that the, the result by 
uh, doing the analysis by only the configuration that are at zero topological charge, we are crap. Yes. If I redo your calculation with only the zero modes reweighted, I can understand which part of uh, even of the zero modes are spurious in this the calculation. Zero modes, right? Yeah, of the only sorry of the zero topological charge. Uh, ah, the zero topological charge. Which part is, is bad? In the yeah, end? exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, 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 for example, let, let's look at this. Okay. Uh, this is these are this, this is the spectrum of, yep. of two configuration. I just just choose randomly, and actually I choose one because the zero mode uh, and, and this one has no, have no zero mode. Okay. So the, the black points are are uh, eigen modes eigen values of the domain world frame mm -hmm. on the same config configuration generated with the same operator. Okay, you see here, and uh, this is uh, okay. This uh, is uh, the zero mode. If is if it, if you have a zero mode, it should be here because there is a mass term. Okay, so it's, it's so that that's the level of the the breaking. It, that's, of the 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 that, that's the level you get uh, if you if you have the zero mode. For example, this mass is zero zero five. You, you should get zero zero. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's the level of the breaking. Okay, so first of all, this is a zero mode, but this is not is not zero. So you have a violation. Remind me which is red and which is black. Uh, this is domain world frame. Okay. The, 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 let's forget about the, the, the these points now. The, the red one. Just the black. Okay. Then these are non-zero modes. Yeah. But non-zero modes, this is the Hermitian operator. It has to be paired. Yeah. Always. These are not paired at all. Yeah. This is really bad. It gets better when you go up, but it's not. If you go do the partial quenched calculation, cal calculate the spectrum of the overlap on the same yeah. configuration, you get this, which is zero, but because it's overlap, it's perfect. It and you get perfect zero. pairing. That's, that's what you expect. Yeah. But it's, it's really different. And actually, this region, which is so important for your quantity, is really different. Okay? okay. Here, the domain world fermion has no zero mode. Uh, the difference among the two? Just to another configuration. Another configuration. Totally no, different, different configuration. I well, choose this one because I had this zero mode for the domain world, and I choose this one because it has no zero mode for And them. they are both have a topological charge at zero. No, these are topological charge one, if you measure. Ah, okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, this one has, has still violations. Yeah. But with the with the if you measure with the the, the, the with the overlap fermions and one zero mode appear, so who is right? What's the topological charge of this? The topological charge of this is zero actually. That was my guess. <laughs> because because this is completely fake. The overlap fermion, once you do partial quenching, is giving you fake zero modes. You cannot count topology using the overlap fermions. Uh, because again, if you look at this, these are living in two lattice spacings. These are really, really not really zero modes. And uh, and I and I have it, these are not just two examples. I can show you that it's, it's, you really need control like this. There's so many examples. Like this. Okay, and if you and if you do your reweighting, what happens? To Which if I do the reweighting. Is telling me that this uh, the weighting is the is the ratio of determinants. This has to be zero. You have one one mode more. The two determinants so different and so so huge separation. The factor of uh, reweighting is coming from the, the ratio. Of it's the, the product of this. It's the product of these these terms, right? But and you get one term more. The, the suppression is, is huge. And these two are slightly closer, but not so much because again, these two are under two different. So you get one only when the spectrum really agree. And and and, and is it, the weighting is, is is acting effectively, effectively because these are really fake. You, you look at the configuration where the this is, is ten times twenty, and and you look that something is, is funny is happening in the spectrum. Uh, someone, uh, someone, I. I want to understand how if you do the reweighting, then this fake zero mode should go away. The, this configuration is counted like zero. Oh, okay. You don't count. You, throw you, you count to like 10 minus 20, 20 in your average. Okay. And so it, it's, it's cut out. Okay. 
you get you get contribution only in, in for, the, for example in configuration which has this this says I don't know yeah, could be ten minus three. You introduce a, a, a modified measure measure which suppresses exactly which suppresses exactly this because this this these are not good uh, modes for the overlap for for the for the for the full calculation to calculation so. And this, this is what you So in your, get, in your work, the U1 uh, anomalies is restored? It's, it's strongly suppressed. I mean, it's compatible with zero. I cannot tell you. What, what we cannot tell is that it, is this happening at, at, at the phase transition? Uh, we can't say now. It's happening very close to phase transition. It's 1.05, 5% above the phase transition. And uh, previous results were saying that it's not even restored at 20% of the business. And uh, actually, in the very first few slides of the other groups, this calculation is done with Wilson improved fermions, which are really bad, but they, they had to go to very fine lattice in order to get this. This is NT equals 16. Which means in the lattice calculation is very fine lattice, and then you never get this unless you go to this fine lattice. Which means again, your 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 calcium is getting better and better. Do you need control? Can, can I see anything of this into Rick? Oh, you can see that suppression I'm showing you. That the, the point is that the, the, the operator is not exactly the same. But also, this is two flavors. No, I, but in the, in the I, measurement I, of Rick. I don't have an operator which. No, no, in the measurement of Rick. Since this you, you is see related this. to uh, the... Rick, you see, you see this 200 mV, the mass of data prime is going to be small. We can check. You can, you can, cut, you can get, you can... Well, the other thing you can do is the, 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 um, measure the, the mass of the pseudo-particle pi on the both phase transition and the pseudo-particle A0. I'm not, I'm not sure if experimentalists are able to do this. If you're able to do that, you should see very close. I'm, I'm trying, uh, still trying to understand the relation between the anomaly and the Dirac spectrum. So Banks Kasher says that the, uh, the spectral density is zero, is proportional to the chiral component. Sure, correct. Okay. Yes. So now you so you have a um, your delta now is um, is measuring is a measure of the anomaly, yeah. right? Exactly. So it basically it's the uh, so in physical terms it would be the splitting between eta and eta prime. Yeah, the splitting between yeah the pi and yeah, which, uh, yeah, in physical terms in two plus one. Yeah. Exactly. So um, and so basically this then says. This okay, 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 so there's the spectral density, and you pointed out, and again you said this is, so the zero, so when lambda goes to zero, it's the crucial if, if rho of zero is, is, uh, is zero, this is not necessarily zero, okay? If you have a gap, that's zero. If you have, this is, this is the analytical calculation principle. If you have something which is going like this, then you get a zero here. Or even better than this, a gap, for example. This is the minimal you, you have you need to, to get to get zero for the for, to for get that. rid of the anomaly. To get rid of the anomaly about the phase mission. So so this is to the have a very, very strong suppression. I mean in this calculation this is what you get zero but may want at high temperature. Yes. Yeah. This is what you want. And, and not the, not you don't want deltas in row zero. Uh, which is one of prediction for the dealer, for the dealer test and then that's approximation. For With the, a delta of lambda. Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. delta of zero. Delta of lambda. Yes. Yeah, delta of yes. that plus a delta of lambda. Row of lambda like uh, some coefficient with delta mm. of lambda yeah. plus. Yeah. Delta. plus. Yeah. So which, uh, so when there is a delta of lambda, which means you have a current constant. No, well, this is this in, in, in the integral of the current constant. This 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 one. And physically, what what happens somehow if if I heat if I 
he don't want to get there. If something happens to the instant points. Uh, yeah, they, they uh, melt down. They melt down. I mean, at, at infinite temperature, at infinite temperature, they are completely melt down. They you don't have topology anymore, topological fluctuation anymore, and actually, this this quantity is, is restored. The point is what we are trying to understand is that the chiral point above the phase transition. If you're not at the chiral point, you have violations. I mean, you have fluctuations of your topology. You do expect some violations. So that's why it's also you don't expect perfect uh, suppression in any experiment, but you expect some suppression that could come from this point, from the current point. Uh, 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 the current point fluctuation should go, should go to zero too, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you want to understand how, how this is affecting you. And what I'm showing you, I've shown you to you is that these these results for the overlap operator, which were the original ones, they are in perfect agreement only once we do it. Suppression almost appears. The gap is not there. There is a strong suppression. Uh, but these these two are agreed. And we don't have the correlator explicitly, but that is the inter the difference of the integral of the correlators. And maybe I'll listen to the um, in those pictures you showed right at the end with the dials. Why I thought they were you just said that they melted away at one stage. Well well but you, you have fluctuations. Test. You have fluctuations. The they come they, they, what do you want to check what yeah. do you want to check is how how the input. Yeah, that, that picture was at non zero mass, so you still have this fluctuation. That the car point is, is everything is suppressed. And uh, but those are the modes which are giving you the signal. <coughs> this is this is the claim. Those are the near zero modes which give you non-zero signal for that. Any any non-zero signal is coming from something like that. So that kind of topological fluctuations, which are which is still zero charge. Yes, because there are non-zero modes. These are the, yeah, actually, the, these are the colors. These are this is the full zero mode, but this is the the. Um, I don't understand. What, what yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what, what's in there now, and uh, I'm plotting there the the three D. So one 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 slice, one slice of a t t fixed uh, the, the, the temporal slice. So this is a three D plot, of course. What I'm what I'm plot in this quantity. The mode, dagger, in convex, gamma phi, this, this one, okay? The integral of this object is zero, because the mode has zero topological charge, but it can be positive and negative, and actually you expect it to be zero. So positive fluctuations and negative fluctuations. This is what I'm showing you. And actually, I'm showing you that they are always localized and always in these two lines. And you can study more of these properties, correlation with the polar blah, 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 and then you get this conclusion. And, and then the, the, each, each one of these has fractional topological charge, of course. Well, not of course, it's not, it's not clear from this equation. <coughs> Any other question? So we'll keep on asking questions once we clap our hands and we say <laughs> bye. <laughs> we don't.